Hi, I'm Desi Serna, author of Fretboard Theory, Guitar Theory for Dummies, and Guitar Rhythm and Technique for Dummies. In this free guitar lesson, I'm going to show you how to play some of the rhythm guitar parts featured in the song The Wind Cries Mary by Jimi Hendrix. This song is a great example of using chord shapes and inversions derived from the guitar cage system. It also has some other types of chords in there that I'll discuss, and it has some use of the major pentatonic scale. This lesson is suitable for intermediate level players on up who are already familiar with standard bar chords and rhythm guitar technique. You can follow along with free guitar tab. Just go to the link in the video description. To get my sound for this song, I'm playing a Strat style guitar made by Bluesman Vintage Guitars. And it's got some Seymour Duncan uh, Antiquity Surfer pickups in it. I'm plugged into a Fender Pro Junior amp. I'm not using the speaker on it though. I'm actually plugged into this Rivera Silent Sister Isolation Cabinet and it's got a Celestion Vintage 30. And then I've got some rever reverb added uh, at my soundboard. So here is my sound. <laughs> I'm using the neck pickup on this guitar. All right, so make sure you have the uh, guitar tab in front of you. I've got it in front of me here, and I'll be referencing it throughout this lesson. So the first thing I want to do is start by playing that intro. So let me play through it. This is just going to be the uh, first uh, four bars of the tab, and then I will break it down and teach it to you uh, uh, note by note. All right, so this song is based in the key of F. Although it's got some F major chord changes, it's got some F minor chord changes, some F mixolydian mode. There's a lot of like modal interchange here, so it doesn't just stay in one major uh, key. Um, and to begin with, uh, you actually have some half step chromatic chord movement where you approach this uh, F chord um, a couple frets lower and step up to it chromatically. The way you're actually gonna, the particular voicing you're gonna use, this is F here in A form, and you're gonna actually um, put its fifth C in the bass position here. So you're gonna actually just play a power chord. F, and here's its fifth, and there's the octave, and there's fifth in the bass. So technically you'd call this F5, F power chord, slash C, meaning you have a C in the bass. And if you just back up a couple of frets, you're going to uh, play chromatically until you reach F. So that's an E flat, that's, a, that's an E, and then that's the F there. This is right out of an A form bar chord. Um, you know, when I teach the cage system, I show you that all of the notes that are related to a chord in this position including that fifth on the sixth string. It's something you could always keep in mind. It could, it's always an option that you can work into your chord, chord voicings here to do something a little out of the ordinary, just like Jimi Hendrix uh, did. Okay, so E flat, E, F, and then you're going to play those same chords again, but you're going to use different chord vo voicings, different shapes, different position, different chord voicings. You're going to play your F up here, in G form, think about a G form bar chord, and you're actually going to just use its uh, major third here on the fifth string. You're going to play strings uh, five, four, and three like that. And you want to bar over to the fifth string because you're actually going to you're going to hammer into that major third there on the fifth string like this. So that's F. There's your root F. Okay, this is from the G the G form. I get into uh, all the details of the cage system and all the different chord fingerings and arpeggio patterns and chord voicings and inversions you can play with it. All of that is covered um, in the uh, instruction that's available on my website. I'm not going to get into those details now. I assume that you already know the cage system and the purpose of this lesson is really to give you a familiar example of how uh, the system is used. 
So here's your F chord, and this would actually be called F slash A, because you've got the, the A in the bass position. And you hammered onto it. And you're going to back up a couple of frets, and you're going to approach this chromatically, just like you did um, at the beginning. When you back up a couple of frets, this actually puts you on an E flat chord here in G form. This would be an E chord in G form. And then there's your F. So you play, you know, you play E flat, E, F, then you play E flat, E, F again and using different fingerings and different chord voicings. And when you when you uh, reach this F5 here with your index finger at the um, eighth fret, you're actually already in position to start the E flat in G form right here. So you just start, you just shift your fingers and go up to F. E flat, E, F, E flat, E, F. So this is just a really great idea of how you could take, you know, basically three major chords that are just a half step apart with some chromatic movement, play some chord voicings that are a little out of the ordinary, take into consideration notes that are related to a chord in each position and build a chord shape that's a little a little outside the box, you know, not your typical standard uh, bar chords. Here you've got the fifth in the bass. That's a type of inversion. Here you have the third in the bass. That's another type of inversion. And then from here, <coughs> you end on F, and you're right in the position of F major pentatonic. I cover the pentatonic scale at length um, <coughs> in courses on my website. I'm not going to get into those details now. I'm assuming you already know it. Here's a great uh, example of how to use the F major pentatonic. There's a little uh, lick here that you see at the end of measure four, and it goes. So you start here, and then hammer on. And that, uh, that hammer on, the uh, G here, is, is really just kind of a, a, a grace note. It doesn't really have any time value. So it's, it's, like, it's like you're doing this, but you're going to put in that G there. So it's. <coughs> um, you could also kind of bar here. You know, these are all notes related to F. And you might do some double stops, something like which I'm sure occurs somewhere in the song. I didn't hear it right at the beginning of the song, but I did hear it in some other spots. And typically when guitar players play this, uh, they know that they can work in double stops, which is a big part of Jimi Hendrix's uh, style. So however you want to do that. And that completes the intro, and then you move into the verse. All right, so the verse starts at measure five. Let me turn my metronome on again. And let me play through the verse, and then we'll go back, and I'll teach it to you note for note. So that was the verse. Notice that it ends with those intro uh, chord changes again. But <coughs> all right, we're in the key of F. So think about your three major chords in the key of F, one, four, and five. <coughs> F, B flat, and C, or <coughs> here they are. And you know that when Hendrix would play an E form bar chord, he would typically reduce it to like an F shape and then wrap his thumb play uh, the root along the sixth string and then mute the fifth string somewhere in between. So he would do something like. So we're going to use these Hendrix style bar chords here. So 
All right, beginning at measure five, you've got a, uh, the chord changes are, let's just play the basic chord changes. You've got C, B flat, F. And you do that twice. But you know, in Hendrix's style, he rarely just strummed basic chords and repeated it. He was always kind of chording and riffing around the chords. He would play different chord voicings. We saw that in the intro. We're going to see that again here in the verse. He would use some, uh, he would add some different chord tones to the, to the chords. Uh, we're going to see that come up. He would play some little pentatonic licks um, over and in between the chords. We're going to see that come up. So lots of good stuff here. All right, so looking at the actual tab, you play the root of the C chord, and then you play the, uh, the top part of it. And uh, you play that, uh, th there's an accent there, and you play it kind of staccato. So release the pressure on your hand to prevent it from uh, ringing. Then a little chromatic um, stepping down to the uh, four chord B flat. So that first measure is. Then you come down here to F. Again, going back and forth between the root with the thumb and then kind of the top part of the chord. And then from here, you're going to play just these two notes in the F chord, and you're going to hammer in with your second finger like this. So it's like you're getting just a little articulation there. You might think of uh, the F with the G in there as kind of like an F uh, sus2 or add 9 sort of sound. So that's the first pass through the chords. You're going to go through those same chord changes again, but you're not going to play, play it the same way. So next, you're actually going to play C here. We are picking up now at measure 7 in the tab, and it looks like this. So here's the C, root C. Think C in A form, and then kind of the top part of the chord. And then... He, you're going to be flat, and this is, I kind of think of this as like being B flat major pentatonic here, or a little riffing in that pentatonic box over the B flat chord. Um, so this starts um, in that measure seven there. So I've got C chord, root C, top part of the chord, and then you have. So let me do that again. So from the beginning of that measure. Let me do it again. Three, four. So you just got to rehearse that until you get the feel for it, you know. You can play some single notes. You can play some double stops. Remember when you were up here, I said, you know, you can, you can kind of bar here and play some double stops. It all is related to the chord and scale. You could do it down here as well. Or if I just played single notes. Either way, Hendrix never played it the same way twice. All right, in measure eight, we're on F now. So root F, then kind of the top part of the chord. And then you're going to hold these notes up here, and you're going to do a hammer on to the third fret of the uh, second string. That's kind of like adding in a sixth. This would be F major, F6. You could hold the chord shape and use your pinky. Whoops. Or you could um, remove some fingers and just focus on the notes that you're targeting. And then from here you have so more of that G. That's the second or the ninth, depending on how you're looking at it. So that's F. Let me back up. 
this is going to be measure seven. Whoops. I'll try to do that uh, cleaner. So rehearse that as much as you need to until you have it memorized and you can get a feel for it and you can play it. Okay, so uh, that was the second pass through the verse. Same chord changes, but Hendrix did not play it the same way. Now we are at measure um, number nine. We're going to pass through the same chord changes again. And guess what? It's going to be different this time. So let me play it for you. Uh, it's going to look like this. By the way, I should point out that this really is kind of my interpretation of the song. I'm playing it as I hear it and as I'm comfortable playing it. If you want to look at how the original recording um, was actually played, follow the link in the video description to go to my website to get the free tab. But then I, will, I also have links to where you can purchase the complete and official um, guitar tab if you want to take a closer look at specifically how uh, Hendrix played it, or specifically how the transcriber thinks uh, he played it. I'm in the ballpark. I'm pretty close, but there's likely going uh, to be some differences here. So, all right, measure nine. I'm using a standard open C chord, and then I have some chromatic steps down to B flat. Again, I'm following those same changes: C, B flat, F, and that B flat is root, and then chord. And then you go to F, and I play the root F, and then I play just this much of the chord, and I hammer in. Then I go back to F, and I play it twice, back to this, hammer in. So the F is. There's a lot of sections in this song where you can hear Hendrix kind of keeping his pick going, so there's there actually might be some more kind of muted strokes in between, you know? So you could you can uh, try doing that. Before I move on to measure 11, let's go back and review the, the verses so far. So we had three pass-throughs on these chords. The first time was up here. Second time was here. Third time was with the open C chord. And now for measure 11, you're just going to move up a whole step to G. This is like a major two chord. Then you're going to go up all the way to the sixth fret, B flat, same kind of Hendrix style shape here. That's the four chord right there. So major two chord, there's the four chord. And you're going to play some 16th note strumming. And we're not done yet. You're actually going to add your pinky on the second string to make a G6 and a B flat. Six like this. So as you're strumming, that actually falls right on beat two. So one. The down stroke of beat two, you add your pinky and then you pull it off on that very next up stroke. So it's. And so you actually will, you'll, uh, you'll skip over the strings on that up stroke. So it's. Okay, that was measure 11, and then into measure 12, now you repeat the intro chord changes. Then you go back to G, E flat. And then here you move up to the next chord voicings. And you can repeat that pentatonic uh, lick or something similar. All right, so that completes uh, the first verse. Uh, the second verse is based on the same chord changes. 
I don't have it tabbed out. I'm not going to walk you through this. There's some very similar recording techniques, very similar um, licks. Like I said, if you want to take a look at the complete and official guitar tab, um, I've got links available uh, for you uh, to purchase that. But I actually want to move on now to the uh, guitar solo. So let's talk about the rhythm guitar parts that are underneath the guitar solo. I'm not actually teaching the solo. So let me put my metronome on and let me play through uh, these rhythm guitar parts and then I'll break it down for you. was actually just measures 16 and 17. There's more chords to the solo, but let's just stop right there and take a look at that. So this solo section starts on F. This is a standard A form bar chord here at the uh, eighth fret. And from here you go to an E flat and then to a B flat, E form bar chord here on the sixth string, and then to a um, uh, a flat. I'm, I want to show you the basic chords first and then I'll get into the actual part. So the basic chords are F, E flat, B flat, A flat. So you got kind of like an F mixolydian mode thing here with that flat 7 chord. Here's your 4 chord. And then you got a little bit of a blues influence here with a flat 3rd chord. You know, think about F. That's your minor third there, you know. Kind of a blues flavored thing there. So if you were numbering this, this is one, flat seven, four, flat three. I get all into guitar chord progressions, playing by numbers, uh, renumbering, modes, key changes. All that good stuff is taught in the uh, video courses that are available on my website. So those are the basic chords. Here's the strum pattern for uh, in the first bar. It's um, so you've got some eighth notes and some sixteenth notes in there as well. I'm I'm strumming at the rate of sixteenth notes. I'm going down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down. When you get to B flat, you're actually going to play a little riff that's kind of based on its triad goes like this. Right, so you've got sixth fret, a little slide from the second of B flat to its third, and then here's the fifth. Then when you go to A flat, you simply just go on the root. Then you come up here, this is where this all started on F, and you're going to play a little kind of F major pentatonic lick which sets you right back up for F again. So you've got and then right back into F. We speed it up. Okay, from there we'll pick up at measure uh, 18. You go back to these uh, Hendrix style E form bar chords and you've got a full measure of G, a full measure of B flat. Then you go all the way up here to D flat. This is kind of an unusual chord change, you know? It kind of catches you, catches you off guard. It's like it's a flat six chord in relation to F. And then you come back to F. So that's G, B flat, D flat, F. And if you're numbering everything from F, that's a major two chord. There's your four chord. That's a kind of jarring flat six chord. You can think of this as modal interchange being borrowed from the uh, relative uh, minor key. The key of F minor would have a D flat in it. When you're on the G, you're going to add in the sixths like this. Same thing on B flat. I didn't hear it on D flat, so I just go. 
and then you're back to F. You know, there's a lead line over the top of this, you know, so think about that. Two full measures. Uh, you know what? On my tab, I play 16th notes, except for when I get to the F, I play 8th notes, so it's... Whoops, full measures here. And then you're back to another verse, and it goes on. So when you look at the tab, I wrote out, you know... All the all the uh, notes of this particular Hendrix style chord, but if you listen to the song, he's strumming and he's not always hitting all of those strings. So it's not going to be. It might be. So there can be some some uh, variation there. You don't have to actually hit on all the notes like I have it tabbed. But it's just easier to follow it, to just see it all tabbed out. Then you can kind of copy your own rhythm. It's difficult when it's all broken up into pieces. Uh, it makes it a little harder to see what's going on. Well, that wraps up the uh, parts that I want to cover. So I hope that you have enjoyed this free guitar lesson. If you would like to learn more about music theory for guitar, including guitar scales, chords, progressions, modes, and more, then visit my website at guitar-music-theory.com. That's guitar music theory with dashes in between the words. When you get there, you can sign up to join my email list re and receive some free materials, and you can take a look at the uh, full courses that I offer. Well, thanks for watching. Be sure to click like on this video and leave me some positive comments.